Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers, you are very welcome. Please adjust your settings above or below by clicking advanced or higher quality. If your video is rendering in 144, 240, 360p, you can bump up the quality to 720 or 1080p so that you have a clearer picture to work with. I have quite a few things to cover today. Various, I think various things that um, I feel led to share. I've said on this channel that I'm not much one for sharing information from my life. I don't believe that that is necessary to do the work of the master's voice. However, certain things have just been um, burdening my heart, mostly because the Lord is warning me about them and also because they kept playing over and over in my spirit over the weekend, a certain, um, a certain experience that I had on Friday. And I feel that it is necessary to share with other people for common safety, con common understanding of the times that we are in. This channel is not here to cause fear. So if you've been watching these prophecies, understand that the Lord has brought you here for such a time as this, as it says in the book of Esther. This is the time when a traditional church understanding and a traditional church background is not going to get the people of God very far. And the reasons for that is not because there's anything wrong with a traditional church understanding, but we have come to the time that the Lord spoke to the to through an angel to Daniel and told him, well, Daniel, seal up the books. So we have come to the time where certain books, certain truths, certain understandings, and certain realities that deeply affect the Christian faith and the Christian mindset and the Christian person, these things are being opened because we are in the final times. We are in the final days. It doesn't matter if um, you've come from a background that doesn't really teach end times prophecy and um, end times understanding. It doesn't matter actually if you've come from a church that's always talking about prosperity and influencing and blessing and how to be a very um, influential Christian in your day-to-day -day life. I'm simply here to let you know that from the Lord Jesus's perspective, the fields have not been plowed properly. The Christian faith has not been taught properly. Many, many truths in the Bible have been overlooked and abrogated in favor of certain particular parts that are very easy to sell to a hungry and a desperate audience. And as a result, the church is lopsided. It leans very heavily one way or very heavily the other way. And we are not a balanced people who are adequately prepared to meet the Lord Jesus Christ at his coming. And so as I go over these few things that have just kept coming up in my spirit until I feel that I have to share them, even if I would not normally share them, I pray that you will understand that I'm sharing these things to prepare you. I'm sharing these things to warn you. I'm sharing these things to kind of um, pull you up out of any internal or external sloppiness that you might be practicing in your own life without knowing it. And then I will go to the prophetic word for the day. So the first thing is from a post that I made on my community page. I can't tell the date, but it's definitely recently because it came after the PVAC video. Um, that video I said had two main themes and I only covered once one, which was what the Lord was saying, the side effects of that first V and basically all the Vs. He said that they're all dangerous, but that one is the worst and it will cause the most lingering and permanent damage to the human body. So that prophecy had two parts and I only covered one part, but even when I left out the first part, actually, I did make a comment and I said that the Lord has been really laying on me the importance of us understanding the times that are coming. And so I notice sometimes that people spend a lot of time arguing about this. Okay, this is this and no, this is not that. And um, it's not going to help you in the times that are ahead of us. The times that are ahead of us are going to go right past the natural. And I have to say that it doesn't matter who will watch this video later. If you are a Christian or not a Christian, and you think that 
the the years ahead so all the time that is ahead of us is simply going to be a question of waking up in the morning getting cleaned up getting dressed and going out to a job and interacting with other people it's not going to always be like that there are going to be very um scary shifts that will come to damage the human reality in that things that are not human are going to be living among us and um I've covered these things on the blog. And like I said, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but these things, I can feel God leading me there. Even if I personally, Celestial, think that it would be too early to start talking about these things, I can feel the spirit of the Lord drawing me to talk about these things. And one thing that I will talk about is this weird creature, like a wolf with pointy ears and a furry body but shaped like a person. So um, I don't know. God was speaking to me. And the word that came to me when he was speaking to me and giving me these downloads, when he was saying that people really need to watch their children, is this word called Wendigo. Wendigo. So never heard about this thing in my life, but the word was clear. And also the spelling in my heart was clear. Wendigo. W-E-N. D-I-G-O. And so after the Lord had given me the prophetic word, I went on the internet to see what this is. And I said in the prophecy that when I looked it up, I was instantly sorry that I did. Because what I saw is something that is a cross between a dog, a wolf, a man, and the ribs of it looked like they were all eaten away. So the creature itself looked like another creature has ripped out all its ribs and all its internal organs. And it is a very scary thing. It doesn't even look like the normal werewolves that we see on TV and see in movies and things like that. And so the Lord was saying that we should be careful when we're out. And I'm going to say this, even if you're in your investment banker suit and you're watching this on the train, and this seems completely distanced from your present reality, God said, that we should be careful when we are out. And the reason for that is because there's not only human danger, but that there is supernatural danger that is slowly creeping into our day-to-day -day lives. There is supernatural danger. There are supernatural creatures, supernatural entities and beings that are sensing the changing of time. So time is already in prophetic time. Prophetic time is when God is going to finish the kingdoms, close the books, end the rule of human beings as we know it, the reign and the dominion of man on earth. And God is going to usher in the kingdom of his son. But as that process happens, you will find that there will be a weakening of I can't explain what it is. Perhaps it's a weakening of dimensions or something like that, but it's going to weaken. And when that dimension that we live in now starts to weaken, the other dimensions surrounding us become strengthened. And there are things that live in those dimensions that will become very bold. So one of the pictures that I've had over the weekend is a picture of, um, you know, these off-grid people. So they move out of the city, which I'm not judging. I, I can't say anything about that. But they move, perhaps prompted by the Lord or prompted by wisdom, they move out of the cities and they go to live in more remote places. And they live where there's a clearing so a human being can live there because it's flat and they've built a house and everything, but then not too far off, maybe a couple of hundred meters, there's the forest, the actual living forest. So what I was seeing is a picture of a porch of this house that has been built with very sturdy logs and the laundry, the laundry. So the laundry was on the line. And then as the laundry was fluttering, there was a shape among the laundry and then the shape moved away from the laundry and then when the lady came to check the laundry later there was a paw print on the laundry but the thing is that the paw print was too high up so this was not the mistaken pause of if a dog or a wolf had run among the laundry and then i don't know gotten tangled and tried to hit the laundry no it was deliberately placed very high up on the laundry almost at human hand height and the understanding that came into my heart was that this creature put this print on the clean laundry so that the family that lives there especially the man can know 
I am here. I live here. I live in these woods. And at any time, I can visit you and take one of you and there will be nothing you can do about it. So this, these are just the images that come on my heart all during the day. So you can try to imagine a person doing, you know, normal work, daily work, and then these things that are not related to daily life at all, spreadsheets and deliverables for your boss, these things are coming upon your heart. This is what I saw, that people who live in the mountains, people who live in the hills, or people who have relocated to these remote areas should really be careful because these things are there. They are thousands and thousands of thousands of years old. They are there and they will not take it kindly that people are there and people will start to go missing. That's all I can tell you. And not only that, I saw the shape of this creature. It's very skinny, long and hairy with the ears, but it was standing in an alley in the city. It was standing, this wolf dog creature being was standing in an alley in a city, in a dark alley. And it was there. And the Lord was making me know that they are bold and they will come to areas where people live. So it's not only this thing. I'm sure there are other things. I have certainly seen a wide range of things that are not human, but it's not only this thing. Many of them in different shapes and sizes will come to populated areas and people in populated areas, cities where you think the worst that you can encounter is a mugger. People will also go missing. The Lord was also warning about human danger. And I think this is where I felt led to share my personal experience Friday. So I will not add a prophecy in this video. I will simply put this up as an update and then I will do the prophecy later. So human danger. Um, many times God has said to me that obedience is, is life and death, life and death. So as a Christian, you're living your Christian life and Many people write on my comments and, and they say, you know, Celestial, I wish I could hear God like you. Oh, I wish the Lord would speak to me like you. And I have to say, um, many times the Lord is speaking. God is always speaking to his people because he, when he says something in the Bible, he really means it. It is not a caveat statement. It is the real thing. So when God says, my sheep hear my voice and they know me, he really means that. So for instance, to all of you wondering why your family members have gone and taken this thing, despite the fact that you've been trying to tell them and tell them and tell them, there are so many reasons. And I will try to share those reasons at the end of the video. But God says emphatically that those who are truly his sheep can hear his voice and they will obey him. And that is a fact. So when you f perhaps feel a prompting in your heart to do something. There are many people, they will feel a prompting in their heart to do something, and then they will douse that prompting with cold water. What do I mean by douse it? They will doubt it and they will think things like, why am I thinking this? And where has this thought come from anyway? And why, why would I think that? And what does it mean? And they will pick and tear at that prompting of the Holy Spirit until basically they tear it to shreds and then the Holy Spirit will not speak again. And then there are situations where the Lord will speak to someone through a verse clearly and tell that person to do something. And again, they sit on that verse like a brooding hen. So many Christians are actually very disobedient people who will perceive from the Lord. He doesn't have to actually say to you certain things the way he says them to me. The way the Lord speaks to me is because of a calling. It is because of an, a, an innate inbuilt um, system that exists in me that was built into me before I was born. And so the Lord can come simply come to that microphone and speak into that microphone at any time. And even when I'm in full sleep, I will hear him. And when I wake up, I remember. But for the most part, the Lord speaks to us through his word. Many Christians cannot even graduate to hearing the the voice of the Lord, the occasional voice of the Lord, because the written voice of the Lord, sorry, this is just my journal, um, but let's just pretend it was my Bible, which is too far away off camera. They don't obey the written word. See, the word will say, um, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And then you won't obey that. You will do all the things to others that you definitely would hate them to do unto you. So you're disobedient to what is written. You know, the Bible says that if you see one who is in need and hungry, don't just pat him and say, oh, you know, go and be filled and the Lord be good to you. Many times the Lord gives me this impression of a person who is wealthy, 
passing the home of somebody who is not wealthy. It, it kind of feels like a woman of South American descent in that house who has many houses. And this vision comes to me so often that I think it might actually be a real person who is doing this or several real people. So I see some a person who is well off, a male that walks past a place where a woman who has about four or five or even six children lives. And in his heart, he knows that that family is not doing well. He knows that that family is struggling, but he does not take the natural step to simply get groceries and take it to the lady and say, you know what? I don't know you, but I just simple math has told me that you are a single mother with five or six children and that I am doing absolutely no harm by bringing you these six or seven bags with beef and with um, cornflakes and with tons of milk and tons of bread and tons of cheese and jam and peanut butter and things that I know that children consume per second. Children are like vacuums for food and this person does not do that. And the impression in the heart of this person is, I'm waiting for God to tell me to do it. So we see what is good to do. We observe it every day in our lives, but we don't do it because we want a special prophetic word before we act on it. And the Lord was making me understand that that is just the arrogance and pride in the heart of his people. The reason that they do it is not because they don't feel the nudging of, of the spirit or not because they haven't read the words of the Lord, which is to do good unto others. They want to hear God specifically say so that when they're telling the story later, they can say, and then the spirit of the Lord said to me, go to house 408 and give them grocery. You see, the story doesn't sound as good if we can't add the prophetic part into it that the Lord spoke. And yet the Bible also says that when you do good, your left hand shouldn't even know what the right is doing. So you shouldn't even be telling anyone if you take people grocery, if you help to pay off someone's student loan, if you're paying someone's rent, or if you're helping to pull your brother out of a ditch, these are not even things that you should be bragging about or boasting about because the minute you do them, you lose your eternal reward with the Lord. And so it's difficult for many people to hear the voice of God in our times. Now to bring all of this back to what happened to me on Friday. Friday was a very busy day for me. My Fridays usually are choked and I always look forward to when I'm done and I can just come home and unwind and not have to reply email or do anything and just be with God and rest. And so I went out and it was an extremely hectic day and I didn't have time to have food. I just had some tea and that was all I had. And by the time I finished, I had to go many places in the, in New York. And so when I finished, I was in an unfamiliar borough. Um, I'm not going to name the borough, but I went to a borough. I live in Brooklyn and I went to another borough that I don't live in because I needed to get some stuff done there. And so when I was finished, because winter is coming, it was already getting a little bit dark. And I thought, you know what, let me just walk around and see this place. And then if I can find a, a snack, a hot snack, I would like to have that. So I walked around for a better part of an hour. And then I was saying, God, you know, I really would like some food. And then one street later, I found some food and I thought, oh, great. I stood in line, I got the food, and then I started walking. But now I'm carrying my handbag and I'm carrying my work bag and I'm carrying my laptop and I'm carrying um, portfolio and I'm carrying another bag that I have on the crook of my arm. And I'm trying to eat food. And um, I'm sorry, I was unbalanced and I was so tired. I was so, so tired. And I saw a chair so I see this chair and it's obviously a homeless person's chair, but the homeless person did not happen to be using it at that time. It was just one of those metal chairs that they usually put in the gym for assembly. And I thought, oh God, thank you. And I sat on this chair and I started to eat my snack. And as soon as I sat on the chair, the Holy Spirit said, you have to move. It is not safe for you here. By now it's fully dark and the street is hectic with activity. So many people coming and going, so many cars and buses and activity. And that is not good for us as Christians to be around too much external activity. It jams your internal radar. It really causes white noise in your spirit and it can be very hard to hear the Lord. But by the grace of God, I always hear him. And so I heard the Holy Spirit. As soon as I sat on the chair, he said to me, Celestial, it is not safe for you to be here. But I was tired. 
I was really tired and I'd already taken one or two bites of this thing and I wanted to finish it. And so I didn't move. I took another bite and the Holy Spirit said, move, 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 move. You have to move now. And I didn't move. I said, God, I'm tired. And I took another bite. And the Holy Spirit said to me, it is not safe for you to be here. Now, let me tell you what was going on. Next to me was a group of about four or five boys. And as I watched, the group was growing and it was clearly a meetup spot. So these kids were getting ready to really jam their Friday. And this was clearly a place that these teens had told each other, let's meet here. So boys and girls were walking up there and going, hey, hey, what's up? And they were giving the fist bumps and they were hugging each other and, and you know, and saying, we're so-and-so and we're so-and-so. Oh, I think he's still coming or I think she's still coming. And so on the outside, all it looked like was teens but I began to feel very strong demonic activity coming from among these teens, the kind of demonic activity that will take them later to smoke weed, to fornicate, to do all sorts of things. And I also began to feel strongly that one of these children would come over to me and hit me in the face, directly in the face, and either break my nose or damage my face so bad that I would have blood coming out of my mouth and my nose. So this is this is all the impressions that started to come to my heart. And yet still I sat there. Now I've shared on this channel that partial obedience is disobedience. And when the Lord speaks to me and tells me, Celestia, do this, I'm putting down whatever and going to do it. So many times um, during the day, if I'm working from home, when the Lord will speak to me about something regarding this ministry or this channel, I will put that work down and I will do what God says because God is my primary employer and everything else that I do here on earth, I'm not taking with me to heaven. And so I know which master to serve when and how fast. And many of us, as I've said earlier in this video, do not do that. We do not honor the Lord. When the Lord says, this person needs help, I want you to sow into this person's life, we begin to act as if this money is the last money that we will ever have. Why should I give her $300? It's 300 whole dollars. What has she done for me lately? And when I sow this $300, what am I going to get back? I'm not speaking of myself. I'm speaking of very real things that people share with me every single day. day. And what we don't know is that partial obedience, even doing it a week later, a person might be going through something horrific in their lives and that $300 would plug the difference between perhaps their eviction and their being able to hang on for another month. But because you, as the secondary God to Jesus Christ, have decided that you will not do it, that you need to pray a third time and a fifth time, and you need to receive confirmation, the almighty God of confirmation, you are causing damage in a person's life, and God will overrule you. He will find someone else to plug the gap. He will find someone else to help that person but later you and the Lord will discuss that disobedience. And so what I learned from that situation, because the Holy Spirit did not relent. This was taking place for maybe only two minutes, maybe less than two minutes, but the Holy Spirit did not relent. And I learned a very important lesson. I learned that in the end times, the distance to lose your life between a yes and a no will be this. I always teach it on this channel that in the end times, when you are walking and you hear the voice of the Lord say, stop, he's only going to tell you stop that one time. You see, because these are not the times when the black suited cops are on the street right now. There's a lot of violence on the street right now, but those guys that shoot to kill aren't there. And so in those, in these days, God still has time to say, celestial, you're not safe. You're not safe. And I saw in myself that tiredness can be one of the reasons that the elite will lose their lives. People who truly love God and who truly obey, but who may be walking through the forest for five consecutive days on just cans of food and not enough water, we are at risk of coming to the point, God's elect, those who truly love him and obey him all the time, it is still possible for us to be harmed because maybe by the fifth day of the seventh day of a trek uh, on water and canned beans and nothing else, not even a, a, a Snickers bar to give you a little extra sugar, the Lord may say to your leader, um, we have to move. He may simply say to the leader, we have to move. And then you're in that group and you're just thinking, 
I've got nothing in the tank. I have nothing. I cannot stand up. I cannot take another step. And the leader is saying, we have to go now. And there may be something tracking you through the trees. Or they may have heat-seeking missiles on you. And they can see, oh, we've got a bunch of them, 12 of them in a clearing. Right. Send a missile to them or send something to them and just blow them all up. Because those are all Christians. And, and God is touching the leader's heart. God may not speak through the leader. God may speak through that quiet person in the group who never says a word. So someone you've been with for three months who's always quiet and timid suddenly says, we have to move. And then the elect are sitting there and the elect are worn out and the elect are so tired and they just can't see themselves taking another step. And then they linger for one minute too long and that may be costly. So normally I will not share from my life, but this has just kept coming up into my heart. Like, Lord, you, you're trying to tell me that no matter how much we love you and no matter how faithful we've been in the past, obedience must be constantly practiced. I could have learned this lesson privately and kept it to myself and just said, thank you, God, I will never do it again. Because I saw very clearly my own face. These children have a new TikTok challenge every five minutes. And the current TikTok challenge, at least in America, is to hit an adult in the face and try to get away with it. It's called punch a teacher challenge. And I saw my own bloody face in a vision because one of these children would eventually, because of the demonic activity among them, come to me and hit me right here with no warning and break my nose or break my teeth or break something. And what was happening as I was sitting there and just saying, God, please just give me 30 more seconds. I'll finish this is for some reason, these children kept being drawn to where I was sitting because that's what happens wherever light is. People use, people think that the devil is afraid of Christians. He is not. The devil saw Jesus fasting for 40 days and thought that guy, and went to him in the desert. When the Lord was having a meeting in heaven with the sons of God, meaning that God was speaking to the other angels, the Bible says that the devil came among them and God tolerated him and said, well, where have you been, Satan? And he said, well, I've been on the earth walking to and fro on it. And that conversation led to the destruction of Job's life as a test. So don't think that the enemy is afraid of us. He is not afraid of us per se. He is only afraid of the, the expression of the Christ in us. I, I'm not sure why I'm saying all these things, but I believe God that somebody needs to hear it. Satan is only afraid of the expression of the Christ in us. And so darkness will be around light, hanging around it. When Apostle Paul was preaching, that girl with the demon followed him for three days straight. There is no reason for a demonized person to be following a person that has light, except that they cannot stay away with it until they are rebuked and until they are destroyed by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that chair was empty and those kids were not there. But as I sat there, more and more of them began to come until they were slightly forming a semicircle around me. And that is when the Lord stopped saying, move, move, and simply showed me the picture. One of them is going to be prompted by a spirit to hit you. And as soon as I saw that, tired though I was, I picked up everything and put it back on my body and I walked away still eating. But that was a lesson for me and I'm sharing this lesson with whoever needs to hear it. Partial obedience will cost you and it will become costlier and costlier and these vaccines are an example of that. So I said something about that in the beginning of the video and Oh yes, it is that you've been speaking to your family member and you've been trying to stop them and they still went and did it. And that's because there's a very powerful spiritual component. Um, the, the mystery of lawlessness is what is pulling these people. And so the Bible says that my sheep hear my voice and a stranger they will not follow. And there are many people who come to this channel and say this very curious thing, but good Christian people have taken it. So many good Christian people. And yet Jesus said in the scripture that there is not one good. There's not a single good person except God. So all I want to say is you need to ask yourself who these good Christian people were that would not listen to the voice of the shepherd, but instead followed another voice. We are going to get the shock of our lives when we find out just how many not good Christian people exist among us, how many not good Christian people 
unsubmitted people, people who do not truly hear the voice of God, people who are hearkening to what I call and what Apostle Paul called another Jesus. They're not listening to the Holy Spirit. They are listening to another voice. Many saying, oh, you know, I'm going to take it. But then he said, if we drink any deadly poison, he meant an error. He meant if you are poisoned, not if you poison yourself, not if you exalt your knowledge above his directives, his direct knowledge, his direct warnings, and then say, okay, God, so I did it anyway, but now I have this policy. Heal me. Okay. Now I'm magnetized. Heal me. Okay. Now I can't stop hemorrhaging. Heal me. You cannot be so lawless and then think that without repentance, you will come into the compassion and the mercy of God. It doesn't work that way. And so I pray that this video will have some use. I'm not sure why my heart was so burdened to share this, but just these two things that you need to be careful of supernatural danger, the increase of supernatural danger. You need to be careful of the increase of human danger. In fact, on the next day after this Friday, on Saturday, I went out and I was on the bus and the bus stopped at a red light and directly across the street, right on the side of the bus, there was a man with a 14 to 16 inch machete and another man who had broken off an entire piece of jagged fencing. And these two men were dancing around each other in the middle of, in the middle of downtown Brooklyn in broad daylight, about 2 p.m., about to either slash each other or, or stab each other. And the store owners along that block ran to their doors and shut their doors so that this fight would not spill into an enclosed area and harm any of their customers. And I saw this thing and everybody on the bus was exclaiming in shock. And this is the kind of thing that I have prophesied on this channel for so many months now, more than 18 months, telling people that God said that wickedness is rising in the people and America will become a gangland. It will become a very, very dangerous place where you are calling the police and the police are just basically telling themselves it's not worth it. It's not worth it to go outside. It will be like purge anarchy where there's just no law and the police just don't want to die for your issue. Don't want to die for your house break that's going on with 15 guys with AK-47s. They're just not going to respond and you are truly going to need the Lord Jesus Christ. So I will make the prophecy separate, but I am just sharing this. Be careful when you are out be careful of human danger, be careful of the increase of supernatural danger, and obedience must be immediate, and e obedience must be fresh. It must be like the showbread that was before the tabernacle of the Lord. The showbread was baked fresh every day. They never put stale bread there. Your obedience has to be fresh. Your obedience has to be ongoing. Obedience has to be moment by moment. And we have to ask God for grace. This is what my personal experience on Friday taught me, that I'm obeying the Lord in all things, in whatever he asks. And yet tiredness can make me slow to respond. It can make me say, God, just another minute, I'm coming. And in the times to come, we may not get that minute. So please be aware of these things. I'm not sure if I will leave this video up for a long time or it will just be momentary. But for now, I will upload it. This is Celestial with the Master's Voice. May the Lord bless and keep you and continue leading you in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Until I see you again, goodbye.